Today's video dedication is brought to you with thanks from Dan Kirch. Ginny Fay versus Muldrotha decided to keep this one. Our opponent doesn't do anything on turn two either. We will get down the loyal apprentice here, I think. Doesn't make a token because our commander isn't in play, but it does have haste, so we'll hit our opponent for two. Then cracking the myriad landscape to get two basics out. And we get into another means of making tokens, so we've got a couple of means of doing that now. Get the Sun Petal Grove out, and we'll cast our commander. The Loyal Apprentice triggered, instead of making a Thopter, making a hasty cat token with that. Crucible of Worlds now, but they didn't play a land from the bin, so I'm assuming they played one from hand. Holding up blue mana this time. Uh, that is a command tower for us, so I'll just throw that out, and going to go for Join the Dance here. And then I'll hold up Raise the Alarm during my opponent's turn, because I don't want to completely play into a board wipe. So instead of a couple of humans, we'll make a couple of cats with that. So we can take advantage of the haste here. And then once again, a cat from the Loyal Apprentice. That's unlucky, a guy's cradle with no creatures in play. Okay, and there's a Plague Crafter. Not particularly worried about a Plague Crafter with all these creatures in play. They could tap down the guy's cradle for mana now, if they want it, before they have to sacrifice the play crafter. Doesn't look as though they're doing that, though. Not sure why they didn't just play a land from the bin, to be honest. Anyway, we'll sacrifice a cat token to that. So we'll assume that they don't have a three-drop to play, just tapping out. We'll go raise the alarm here, and... Going to turn these into dog tokens, because it gives us additional power. Gives us something to skull clamp as well, with the one toughness. The haste obviously doesn't matter if we're doing it during our opponent's turn. Alright, Sylvan Library. Uh, we could go for Rabble Rousing here, but we actually have our opponent if we go Gavany Township, so we'll do that. Make another cat token with the Loyal Apprentice, should have waited for that to come out, so that we could have put a plus counter on this cat as well, but I don't think it matters. And there we are, managing to outrace our opponent. Wasn't a particularly interactive game there, so we'll try another one. Up against Satoru Umizawa this time. And that is effectively a one-lander. We're certainly not keeping a one-lander. Uh, yeah, that's looking better. I think in all honesty, I'll just get rid of Swiftfoot Boots there. I like everything else. First spell of the game is a Lightning Greaves for our opponent. We draw into Spawning Pit, so... Yeah, I think we go with the Loyal Apprentice. It worked out well for us last time. And there we see Satoru Umizawa. So that has Shroud and Haste on it now. Um... And yeah, if they drop a land next turn, they could get in something really powerful. Alright, but there's a generous gift for us. Uh, yeah, if we get down our commander, we can actually block the Umizawa. And then hopefully they can't ninjutsu anything out. So, play the Misty Rainforest. And then play our commander, Ginny Fey. Loyal Apprentice triggering on our turn, much like in the last game. And uh, we'll make a dog here. Um, if we can have a couple of dogs in the way of the Satoru, then it means that we can maybe start swinging in with Ginny Fey. So we'll have to leave it there, not going to swing him. They do have the fourth mana for their commander now. And morphing in a creature, that's curious. Okay, Requiem Angel. So I think we're just setting up here. Let's go for the Tireless Provisioner and hopefully we can actually start getting into lands. Once again, going to make a dog. The Demir player getting into more lands than us, which is unusual. Um, they can have a legendary creature gain fear, so they can get their commander through here, but they'll have to bounce it back to hand. And they won't be able to activate the um, ninjutsu on it either. Yeah, so instead playing the Sword of the Animist. And that bumps that up to a 3-5. I mean, we can double block if they want to swing in, lose their commander. So yeah, deciding against that. Uh, still no land for us, unfortunately. Rumor Gatherer is a means of scrying, so we can maybe scry a land onto the top. We will get into a creature at the beginning of combat, of course. But yeah, could really be outracing our opponent here. Don't want to be allowing our opponent to get into the long game. So the dog coming in triggers the Rumor Gatherer. And we will get a scry. Alright, and of course, now is a land on the top, so we will leave that on there. And uh, that means we should be able to get down Terror of the Peaks next turn. So let's start landing some Vigilance damage. We'll lose a dog here, but we will be able to get six points of damage through, assuming they don't block with the Morph creature. And this dog did have haste, of course, from the Loyal Apprentice. Gives the token haste. Haven't missed a land drop yet, unlike us. Down to three cards at least. 
So Lightning Greaves now goes back onto the morph creature so that they can target with Shizo, I imagine. They'll tap down two lands to do that and then have four left up for the ninjutsu. So that's what they go for. Swing in with their commander, they'll get a rampant growth as well. And then going to bounce back their commander with the ninjutsu cost three cards in hand. And it is Ulamog, the infinite Gaia. Don't get the Annihilator or the cast ability here, so it's just 10 damage. Um, yeah, I think I'll actually take the 10 here. So there we get into a land, play that. That triggers the Tireless Provisioner, we will make a treasure token. And then Ginny Fey, we will say no to the replacement effect, so we get a treasure. Let's go at Terror of the Peaks, I fear we might be a little bit too late here. Miss way too many land drops. We'll get to draw a card from the Rumor Gatherer at least. Get a Scry first of all. That is Brass's Bounty, nowhere near that, I don't think. No, nowhere near that. So that gets Scry to the bottom. Loyal Apprentice. Uh, yeah, might as well make the dog because it is going to have haste. So that allows us to Lightning Ball. It'll just have to be our opponent's face because they've left the Lightning Greaves on the Morph creature. Rumor Gatherer triggering for a second time will draw us. And uh, that is Aura Mutation. No Auras in play. No enchantments in play. So we just have to try and outrace our opponent here. See if they want to throw away the Morph creature or if it's going to actually be of some relevance to them. Um, okay, throwing it away to a dog, so we'll find out what that morph creature was. It was an Ebon Blade Reaper. When it deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half their life rounded up. So we've got Annihilator 4 to think about here. Um, I wonder with what little bit of an engine we have, if it's actually worth sacrificing some lands. I've got Call the Copper Coats to get some bodies into play maybe. And the good thing is that this is an instant, so we can trigger the Rumor Gatherer on our opponent's turn and scry and draw a card on their turn. Okay, so in comes the Ulamog again. This time Annihilator 4, so we'll get rid of Land, Dog, Tireless Provisioner and Dog. And they're not blocking the damage because we're just attempting to outrace our opponent here. Halamar Depths coming into play, reorganise the top three. And out comes Satoru Umizawa again, two cards in hand. Sword of the Animist onto their commander. Followed by the Greaves. And then it is Silverfur Master, so plus one plus one to Ninja and Rogues. That does mean that their Ninjutsu ability will only cost three. But one card in hand, I think they've just been really fortunate to get into the Ulamog here. It is the indestructible Eldrazi, unfortunately. So the Generous Gift, not much use to us. Deep Forest Hermit, no good to us either. So Loyal Apprentice going to trigger. We'll get down a dog once again. That triggers the Terror of the Peaks. I'm just going to pile as many Lightning Bolts onto my opponent as I can. We will get a Scry. That is Gaia's Cradle. Might get us back into it, but I don't know if... Yeah, we'll keep it on top. I'm not sure what I'm going to sacrifice to the... Um, to the Annihilator next turn, probably Call of the Copper Coat stuff. So attacking with the Dragon, that's 5. That'll take them down to 12. And then we can get 3 creatures that Lightning Bolt thanks to them being dogs. So that'll take them down by 9 and then we can maybe attack in with Terror of the Peaks for the win next turn. So yeah, I think we're just passing like that and once again a lot of commenters have noted that I love this card and once again it might get us out of a jam. I mean, there's a reason that I love Call the Copper Coats. It's because it's an excellent underrated card, as we may be about to see here. Our opponent drops a land, so still a mystery card in their hand. Hopefully it's not another Eldrazi. Might be able to just hard cast an Eldrazi and give it haste here, which could make all the difference. If they drop another creature, though, that'll give us four Lightning Bolts from Call the Copper Coats and Terror of the Peaks, and once again, that could make all the difference. Um... Ulamog is legendary, so it's being given fear, which might suggest that they can't get through with their commander. Okay, they do swing in with their commander. So, Annihilator goes on the stack. Um, let's go call the Copper Coats now, targeting our opponent, of course. And this seems to be landing, so definitely go for the dogs with that. Get three dogs into play, thanks to our opponent having three... Uh, creatures in play, Terror of the Peaks being pointed at our opponent for 3 damage a pop. 
Uh, and they concede. They don't lose there, so I'm not sure why they are conceding. Well, they obviously don't have anything else. We were going to scry and then draw with the white creature and then scry again afterwards. But yeah, if the last card in their hand wasn't going to do anything and they weren't going to get through lethal damage to us, then obviously uh, we win next turn with another lightning bolt from the Loyal Apprentice. So hopefully you all enjoyed that one. Terror of the Peaks doing some work for us there. Please consider donating on Patreon if you did enjoy it, and I will see you all in the next one, I hope. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.